Jim Bob Cooter sounds a little bit more urgent about things than does Gus Bradley, but that's not a surprise. I mean, that's just who these guys are. It's their personalities, right? And that's neither good nor bad necessarily, but Jim Bob Cooter sounds like a guy who's willing to tell a little bit of truth, especially about Jonathan Taylor. And I thought that that was interesting in listening to Jim Bob Cooter talk about why Jonathan Taylor didn't play at all in the fourth quarter after 12 carries, 103 yards. Like, that's a pretty serious amount of productivity for a guy like Jonathan Taylor, right? A running back in the National Football League. I mean, you average better than eight yards a carry. You'd kind of expect to be on the field in the fourth quarter. He wasn't. Why? Shane Steichen yesterday said that it was about reps for Trey Sermon. Jim Bob Cooter, a little bit more revealing in his reply. Hey, Jim Bob, uh, just in your estimation on that third and one pitch play to Trey Sermon, what kind of went wrong on that play? Yeah, we just didn't do a good enough job sort of coaching-wise, getting everything set up the way we would have liked to uh, on that play, um, kind of. Give, give the defense credit for playing it well. Uh, we kind of envisioned a little different uh, outcome there, obviously. Uh, just just got to got to do a little bit better job uh, coaching, coaching and setting up the play and putting our guys in a better position to have success. James? Jim Bob, um, obviously JT didn't play in the fourth quarter. Uh, how aware are you of those things and what are those conversations like on the sideline when – the guy, uh, you know, had 12 carries for 103 and then doesn't touch the field in the fourth quarter. Yeah, we're talking about all that stuff. We're talking about uh, sort of schematic stuff, personnel stuff, who's in, who's out, um, obviously game situation and all that stuff. Those are discussions that are ongoing uh, on the headsets uh, amongst all of us. JJ? Jim Bob, if Downs is back this week or next week or whenever it is, how does his ability to create separation and find open space out of the slot, how does that help Anthony out, just kind of hit some of those layups? Yeah, Josh, uh, you know, played really good ball in his first year uh, as a rookie and was having a really, really strong camp, you know. So to, you know, have a have a really good player, obviously he's played primarily in the slot, but I think he can he can play outside a little bit, but but he's played primarily in the slot. To have a really good player, uh, that's going to come in. I think he he and Anthony have a really good chemistry. Uh, so whenever that time is, we're excited to get Josh back. He's, like I said, he's put in such a great off season and training camp of work. We're looking forward to watching that pay off for him with a really productive season uh, this year. So it'll, you know, always good to always good to add a good player back into the mix. And uh, for Josh, especially, just kind of knowing how hard he's worked to get back. Whenever that time comes, we're we're excited to see it, and I'm sure Anthony is too. Joel? Uh, do you guys need to get Anthony a few more designed runs? Uh, I know you probably uh, can't like say a number, but. I think every week by game plan, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a weekly discussion that we talk about how our run game is going to look and how that meshes with the RPO game, the pass game and all that. It's an ongoing game plan factor where, you know, sometimes, you know, I think a little bit earlier in the offseason, I was talking about how dangerous it can be to have Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson, uh, you know, sort of reading that defensive end. And one of them, one of them hasn't, one of them doesn't, and how tough that is on the defense. Uh, you know, give the, give the defense a little bit of credit for they, they, sometimes they can pick who that is. They can make that decision. Uh, they can play that uh, run play a certain way. Um, so, you know, we, as we, as we game plan this thing, as we sort of put our plan together each week, uh, we're looking to, you know, produce, uh, better on offense than we did last week overall, for sure. Uh, and use, use all the, all the talented players and all the talent that we have, uh, to help us do that. But like I said, in this league, give defenses credit for, uh, making it, making the offenses work. It's a little bit of a cat and mouse game sometimes. Uh, and, and sort of last week we didn't. We didn't quite play up to the standard we would have liked to. I think that was obvious on offense, and uh, we're we're looking to bounce back. Long long season ahead, bunch of bunch of ball games to go, and uh, I like our guys, like our chances. Stephen, hey Jim Bob, um, when Anthony came in after the game to to talk to us, I mean, I could see on his face like he was pissed, um, which is healthy, I think. Um, just what are your what what have been your interactions with him? 
um, in, in these adverse situations, you know, mm -hmm. just in terms of like what his mood is and just how hard does he take it and just, you know, how does he kind of process all that? Yeah. Um, he, he's really good on the sidelines. You know, we're going through these games and you're going to have ups and downs in the games. You're going to have the touchdown drives uh, that where you're rolling, you know, full speed ahead. You're going to have those sort of three and out drives. You're going to have, you know, everything's going to happen to you in, over the course of an NFL season uh, coming out of those drives. Anthony's been really good. Uh, obviously, we sort of talk after most series, go through the plays, go through the that that surface, um, and then a lot of the times he's talking to his teammates. He's communicating with them. Uh, they're talking about what they like or what they don't like. Uh, sometimes Anthony sort of speaks his mind with what he sees out of a route or out of a you know anything, anything that goes on out there, which which I think is really healthy uh, for an offensive football team to have those discussions on the sideline. And uh, when the quarterback is comfortable having that discussion and making those sort of having having those talks on the sideline, it's really good for everybody. So, you know, we're into it. He's competing like crazy. Uh, you know, that that fourth down run, what a what a competitive, you know, finishing play that was by him. We're we're all fighting like crazy to go win these things. And, you know, we're playing at the highest level in the world. And shoot, sometimes you're gonna throw a few punches, you're gonna take a few punches. But uh he's he's competing like crazy. You know, we're 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 really excited about you know, where we're heading, where this thing's going. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna keep this thing moving. We gotta get better today, we gotta get better tomorrow, we gotta get better this week. Uh that's all of us. Um, but but Anthony's been really good, demeanor's really good on the sideline and and uh sort of around the building. George. Yeah, I know it's all obviously only been two weeks, but how much have you learned about what Anthony likes and what he doesn't like and how best to utilize him in this scheme from from live game reps? I think that's the best that's the best way to learn about all of our players. Um, you know, we value practice uh, a whole lot, right? Talk about talk about that all training camp and all that good stuff, but when you get in these live games, uh things do change, things are different. Uh obviously, it's live action, it's full tackle football. There's not cards, there's not scripts, there's not, you know, any of that stuff. There's a, there's a lot we learn about all our guys and you know, the best, I've said this before, you guys keep a running tally of some of these comments I say, but uh, the best teams in this league, the best offenses in this league, they get better as the year goes, month to month, week to week. Uh, and, and we intend on doing that. And I think one of the real keys to doing that is utilizing your personnel better and better and better as the, as the season goes. And you, you learn something about, you know, a certain play you put up or a certain route you put up for a guy or a certain run scheme you put up. Uh, for different guys blocking different sides of it, all that good stuff. Um, so this is the time of year that, you know, we're we're learning a lot about our guys, especially our guys that uh, maybe aren't multiple year veterans uh, in the NFL that are that are playing their their first or second or third year, uh, you know, second year in our system at the most here. Um, so we are learning a lot, and uh, the goal is to improve uh, how we utilize them, and and the more we learn, the better we'll do that. Chap. Yeah, Jim Bob, the, the one of the craziest stats is that twenty minutes of possession time. Some of that's on the defense for not getting off the field, but how much of it is on you guys for not like making the layups and sustaining things? Chap, we we need to we need to do a better job, and we want to. The standards higher around here for sustaining drives. Um, you know, nobody wants to have a three and out. It's going to happen to you in the NFL from time to time. Uh, and then from time to time, uh, we've had some explosive plays, which will shorten a drive. But we would like to have those those drives where you're making first downs, uh, you're converting those first downs, uh, you know, through a, through a mix of different play types. Uh, you're able to sort of control the ball, control the line of scrimmage. Uh, that that will ultimately help you control the game. We can do that better as an offense. And I think that'll be good for good for our whole group. Our guys are fighting like crazy. Um, it's a it's a it's an emphasis for us. It's an emphasis for us as a coaching staff. We got to do a better job as a staff, uh, sort of preparing preparing to 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 have that happen, to let that happen, uh, to encourage that to happen. So, uh, as an offense, uh, we're 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 definitely looking to control the ball a little bit uh, more efficiently there, uh, which I think will help our whole team. Last two here, we'll go James and then Nate. Good, Bob, again, I mean this with all respect, but just curious on JT, um, why, why didn't he play in the fourth quarter from your yeah, perspective? Yeah, Coach, Coach kind of hit this yesterday. The game situations, when they change in this league, 
uh, those those things tend to happen when you get into big passing situations. Uh, I'm not going to get into sort of play calling and all that, but Coach Shane was planning on throwing the ball a bunch, um, and and that you know that emphasizes different aspects of the game, and uh, that's just sort of the direction we went with it. Last question, Nate. Jim Bob, just curious what you guys are, are doing or, or can do to get Michael Pittman Jr. going. Just uh, surprising to see him go two games and, and not, you know, be a big factor, especially when you threw the ball as much as you did the other day. Yeah, we got to get all our guys going. You know, Pitt's, Pitt's been such a good player around here. Um, you know, we're just we were just a little unsynced the other day on offense, and it got all of us. It got all of our, you know, everybody's targets and everybody's everything. You know, we just. Uh, Got to sort of regroup, and here we go. Week two turns to week three. We want to play a little better football around here. That's gonna that's gonna lead to you know those more sustained drives. Chap was asking about, and that'll that'll come with more touches and targets and completions and uh, you know third down conversions and all that good stuff, right? We it's early in the season. It's an NFL season. There's going to be things that pop up that we have to sort of work on and improve. And Pitts Pitts a very very important part of this offense. You know. Uh, the, the better we are all playing, uh, the more targets everybody's going to get in completions and yards and all that good stuff. So we got to we got to get the whole the whole operation uh, sort of going a little bit better this next week. We got a big opponent uh, coming in here that's playing really good defensive football that that's going to challenge us. And Pitt's going to be a big part of big part of why we have success around here on offense. So we're going to look to look to improve overall and, you know, Look forward to watching our guys get to make those plays again. That's Jim Bob Cooter. And you know what? Gus alluded to uh, the offense and the defense kind of needing to be uh, complementary to one another in order for this team to really play. And I couldn't agree more. You do have to be that. The offense has got to stay on the field. The defense has got to get off the field. And if you do the opposite, you're going to put your your other team's in kind of a pickle. You're going to put them in a bad spot. And the Colts have been in a bad spot through two weeks. 40 minutes time of possession for their opponents in both those games. No surprise they lost. No surprise that they were dominated in, in large part despite the fact that the score really doesn't reveal that. But these games weren't as close as they looked, right? Jim Bob Cooter has got to get this offense right along with Steichen. The defense has got to get right. All three elements have got to support one another in order for this team to be successful. And so far, not even close, despite the fact that everybody's back. You're, you return 25 starters, including the specialists. You would expect that you would get a predictable result out of those groups. Not so far.